Hey guys, um, it's out kitchen. <laughs> anyway, it's even. Um, so I'm sorry I've been off for a few days. Like, I kind of just haven't really been cooking anything very special. It, everything's been super simple, just basic, baked chicken, stuff like that. But anyway, I wanted to come on to let you guys know that I'm still here. And also to give you the recipe, the recipes for what I cooked yesterday and what I cooked today. So starting off with the steak, um, all I did with the steak was I seasoned it on both sides, garlic salt and pepper. Um, they were New York strip steaks. And I'm not, I'm not a great steak cooker, but I know how I like my steak. I usually like it medium rare. Anyway, so I seared it on my cast iron uh, skillet uh, about five minutes on both sides uh, at a medium high heat with butter, butter on top, and I crushed a clove of garlic and put it on top of the steak while it seared on one side. Then I turned it over after the five minutes and I allowed the garlic to kind of get a little cooked before I took it out from underneath the other side of the steak. Let those cook, took them off, put them in a pan, put uh, foil over them just so they can kind of finish, I guess you could say. And then um, I baked potatoes. I sliced them in half and I roasted them. What I did was I baked them, obviously, put a little bit of salt, didn't put any oil on them, but I put, I crushed a clove of garlic in each one, and I wrote, I crunched up the foil, closed them, put them in the oven for about four, at 450 for about an hour. Took them out, you can smell that roasted garlic, and you can literally taste that yummy garlic taste when you bite into that potato, oh, it was so good. And for the asparagus, what I did with the asparagus was I uh, cut up bacon, applewood, uh, applewood smoked bacon, cut it up, um, put it in a pan, let it fry, put some sliced onions, and let that go let them saute and get nice and uh, well done and then I put my asparagus in let that go put the lid on top and let it go for a few minutes then take it off kind of started rotating it so it gets like a nice little crispy outside and the obviously you want the asparagus to get steamed a little bit because you want them soft but not too soft you still want like a tiny little bite and that was it for that. Um, and yeah, and honestly, like, uh, I had put the steaks back in with the baked potatoes to kind of finish, kind of warm them up again too, because they felt kind of like they got a little cold sitting. Um, and my husband's steak ended up getting a little more well done than he hope because he, he likes he basically likes the steak to talk back to him so I don't I like it medium rare I, I do like a little bit of blood to come out or even just for it to be pink in the middle mine was okay I was able to he, he obviously still ate his but anyway <laughs> um so he so yeah he we ate it was, it was still very delicious uh regardless of how cooked it was it was actually still pretty tender it wasn't tough, um, it was well done, but, uh, anyway, that's, that was it for that, and now we move on to the garlic parmesan chicken. So let me tell you, there's a little bit of a story on that one. I had no idea what to cook all day long. I just knew I had chicken out. We had a couple of our youth coming over, so I was like, okay, I need to make something with the chicken. And I kept thinking to myself, and I kept asking myself, I'm like, what am I going to make? What am I going to make? And my mind was just kept going blank. So finally, I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to look on Pinterest. I just looked up chicken recipes, and the first picture I saw was a creamy-looking chicken breast 
with what it looked like was spinach and like sun dried tomatoes. Um, and I was like, oh, I'll make something like that. I was like, perfect. I have uh, par Parmesan garlic sauce from Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, I just got a new bottle yesterday. And I have pasta. I have fresh tomatoes. I have onions. I have garlic. I was like, perfect. I know what to do. So I pan fried the chicken before I did anything else. Pan fried it with garlic salt and, and a good amount of pepper, actually and let that go put the lid on top i um browned it on both sides first and then i put the lid on top let it kind of cook in i wanted the inside to start cooking then what i did in another pan i sauteed some sliced onions and i chopped up some tomatoes and i put some garlic in there sliced up some garlic and let that saute together Put a little bit of salt, and that was it. I left it, let it stay there after it sauteed and stewed for a little bit. Then, in the other pan, I, you know, kept, I put a little bit of milk after the, I saw that the chicken was getting a lot more, um, a lot more cooked, started getting more cooked. Uh, but I didn't want to put water, because I didn't want to boil it. I wanted it just to get, like, a nice, like tender steam so i put some milk and i put my gar my garlic parmesan sauce inside and i squeezed i would say a good half quarter to half cup in the the pan i you know i mixed it all up and everything i got it all like lathered i guess you can say uh and put it put the lid on let it go and then a few minutes later, take it off, check it again, you know, turn it, rotate it, make sure everything's getting cooked evenly. And then I, and I had left it on low for a good while. So I finally picked up the, the heat to half, maybe half heat, like medium, um, and let it go for the rest of the way. Came out perfectly. And I don't say perfect to tune my own horn. It just came out to where you're like, you're happy. You're satisfied with what you made. And I kid you not, guys, I was waiting to hear somebody say something or whatever, you know. It was silent. It was completely silent. There were four people in my house, and not one person was speaking. And so I finally spoke up, and I was like, so no talking means good, right? And everybody's like, oh my gosh, it's delicious. I'm like thinking to myself, dude, I just pulled this out of my butt. <laughs> anyway, um, but that's pretty much it. Um, the chicken, like I said, pan fried it. Uh, oh, the pasta. <laughs> I didn't even, um, okay, so I put angel hair pasta to boil. I put uh, about a tablespoon of butter in the water, some garlic salt. That's how my brother John taught me how to make it. How to make um, your pasta noodles, and I let that go for a boil. Then I put the pasta in after it started boiling. After it was done, took it out. Uh, I saved a little bit of the pasta water, guys, just a, a tiny bit, about a ladle full. Uh, put, um, strained it, put the pasta back in. I had the water that I reserved. Then I put a little bit of butter back in, put the onions, the garlic, and the tomatoes that I had set aside, put that in, stirred it all up. Then what I did was I ladled some of the sauce from the chicken inside of the pasta and let it get a little more uh, juicy so it's not so dry. You don't like dry, you don't, you don't want to eat dry pasta. So I did that and dude, delicious guys, delicious. You have to try it. Uh, again, I'm not a good measure. I I really just go by what I feel and how many people are in my house. It comes from experience. If I have leftovers, praise God. I send it, I send it with my husband for lunch the next day. But And if I don't, hey, I made the right amount. God multiplied was just enough. Um, but yeah, I honestly, I just cook how I feel. I... I kind of just ballpark off of how many people are in my house. 
and with a chicken I just had I literally just had three leg quarters so three full leg quarters and I cut them up I let them thaw completely I cut them into about six pieces and it was perfect all right guys well thank you for listening watching um continue to subscribe continue to watch and you know thank you for all your love and support i could i totally appreciate you guys watching and learning from what i do and even if you get a chuckle out of some of the things i say hey uh that's all the better all right thank you for watching this is elf kitchen or today it was honestly just l talk <laughs> bye guys